Yeah, long gospel readings for scrutinies. I realize that. Long gospel. As promised, this is the second scrutiny. Last week, for the first scrutiny, was all about sin as damage. Sin harms people, and when you sin, you harm yourself somehow. Today is all about sin as something that takes us away from truth. And when we renounce sin, we grow closer to the truth. That's pretty consistent with our faith, after all. One thing we call the devil is the father of lies. So sin goes hand in hand with falsehood. And I think we know that, you know, that sin goes hand in hand with falsehood. Because when you have a little kid, like a really young child, that does something that they know is wrong, they tend to lie about it, don't they? Honey, where did these candy wrappers come from? They weren't on your bedroom floor when we put you to bed last night. I don't know. (laughs) As if there's a chance the parents will say, oh, we don't know either. I guess it's a mystery we'll never solve. You're free to go. That's from an Andy Woodhall skit. Love that guy. But seriously, you do need to teach your children that lying is not an appropriate way to deal with a mistake or a bad decision. Even if there are consequences to face, lying just makes things worse. That's one of those things we just have to learn in life, hopefully early in life, because sin always makes things worse. Lying makes things worse. And one of the main reasons we sin in the first place to get away with things we know are wrong. And our faith teaches us that's what a sin is, an action that's displeasing to God somehow. So I say again, when you renounce sin, you are proving your loyalty to the truth. And truth sometimes involves being hard on yourself. Sometimes you need brutal honesty about where you are in life. But truth also teaches us the importance and necessity of mercy. The real truth is, we're all sinners. So we need to be prepared to forgive one another and ourselves. The way I like to think of it is, if our religion was the human body, our mercy and forgiveness would be our white blood cells. There's no better way to naturally fight off spiritual sickness than your own immune system. So with that analogy in mind, what would truth be? What would truth be? I'm going to go with the skeleton. Truth keeps everything firm and in its proper form. And like a bone, if you bend a truth enough, it breaks. And when you break a truth, You need to repair the damage and reset it. Because like bones, if you completely break a truth, you don't have two new little truths. You have two new half-truths. And the difference between a half-truth and a lie is slim indeed. You must reset the bone to its original state because, frankly, bones don't work any other way. With that in mind, let's get into the gospel for a minute or two, shall we? The man born blind, pretty obvious choice for what is essentially truth day. The dude's born blind, Jesus meets him, he heals him, he he has his sight restored, And then he sees Jesus for who he really is. And no one else in that gospel reading 
was able to manage that. They weren't able to see the divine grace at work in Jesus. They were more concerned about whether or not that healing was legal on a Sabbath. So frankly, everyone else in the story missed the point. That truth was just a little too much for them to handle at that time. The truth is, Jesus heals our bodies, he forgives us our sins, and he brings us closer to the truth. I was blind, and now I see. And those things are not independent. They're not unrelated to one another. In fact, everything, and I mean everything, about our faith is interrelated. It's all connected. I'm talking about our personal relationship with Jesus, our communion of faith, our sense of mercy, our devotion to the truth. It's all connected. And the good news about that is, if you manage to strengthen one in your life, you will at least indirectly strengthen all the others as well. That's a big part of what that gospel reading is about. Jesus never heals one specific body part without mending the whole person. He heals our souls and he restores our relationship to God. All right. I got one more thing to share, then we'll move on with Mass. As you can see, it is Pinky Sunday. Laetare Sunday, if you want to be technical about it, whatever. Let us rejoice and be glad, for Easter is all upon us. Given that today is Truth Day and Joy Day, I've got a question for you. And I want you to think about it for the rest of the day. I'm not going to give you the answer uh, because I, I don't have one yet. Given that it's tr Joy Day and Truth Day, my question to you is this. What exactly is the connection between truth and joy? Because I know what the cynical thinkers would answer. They would say those two things are inversely related, which means the more you know, the sadder you get. That cannot possibly be the whole answer. Because if it was, that means we would devote our entire lives to avoiding reality as best as we can, and it would mean that the best, happiest people in the entire world would be the ones who know the least about themselves, the world, and God. That is obviously not the case. So with all of these uncomfortable truths that we have to understand in life, how exactly does truth lead us to joy? Is it appreciation for the beauty of the created world, flawed though it may be? Is it grounded in the promise of salvation in Christ, despite all of the suffering we have to put up with along the way? I don't know. The answer is not perfectly clear. So think about it. Life in Christ is not easy, but it is meant to be joyful, grounded in truth, and mended with mercy. <laughs>